Hello everyone, welcome back to Shane Shed. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to be replacing the upper, well, the front upper uh, control arms. So uh, let's get into it. Before I get too involved in pulling this upper control arm off, I'll just share with you how I discovered these bushes were shot. So I've recently done a tire uh, rotation and normally anytime I'm doing it, I'll just normally give the wheels a quick feel just to check the wheel bearings for any play. Uh, and this time, I've uh, going up and down, I thought, ah oh, crap, this is by a wheel bearing shot. But then on closer inspection, uh, I can see movement in the suspension arm. So, so what I'm going to do, I'll, uh, I'll rip this wheel off and uh, then I can get the camera in and the light and you guys can see a bit easier. So let's get the wheel off. Right, that was quick. Okay, right, let's get the camera in here and uh, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so... Hopefully these guys can see alright, but as I was moving that tyre up and down Try and do this one handed while holding the light, doesn't really work So as this, I was moving this wheel up and down I won't. You Just watch that front bush up here You can see that That movement there, so It's completely shot So we're going to rip this out So essentially To get these upper control arms out We've just got the ball joint at the back here, sway bar mount, uh, we've got the level height sensor right here, so that's just a little, uh, it just slides off there, just undo the brake line from uh, the upper arm, uh, also the, uh, the wheel speed sensor, uh, it's just a little line there, and we've got two bolts uh, at the back. Alright, so... First stage, I'm just going to remove, or loosen this one nut from the outside here. So these are, this one here is a 17mm. Uh, now I'm not going to take this all the way off to start with, I'm just going to lose it, leave it loosened. And just to crack that uh, ball joint, I'm just going to give it a decent whack with a, with a sledge. There you go, that's popped that. Now generally I'll just work from the outside in, or whichever way suits itself. Now this sway bar, I'll probably need to get the uh, the opposite side up in the air to rejoin it, uh, mainly because the suspension the suspension is at full droop here, where it's slightly compressed on the other side. But it might still be okay. Hopefully you'll be able to see this okay. These little height sensors, we just push them straight off towards the, the center of the sensor so that's it there just fold them up sort of neatly so there's a bolt for the brake line it's at the back here which I'll try and get out you probably won't be able to see it on camera often fine sometimes here but just undoing this front ball joint you'll be able to lift that whole control arm up and uh, get to the bolt underneath for the brake line I'll just often uh, tie this uh, up to the, the strut just to, so it stops it pulling around and uh, stressing any brake lines or uni joints, all that sort of thing. Uh, one bolt out there, and uh, we'll just pop these lines out from the arm and there we go and they're free now I'll just use a ring spanner on these just to get in there because there's not much room for a socket and, and all that but just crack them loose Bolt out. Now this inner one's normally a bit more of a a pain, just due to poor access. Now 
turn it. And here comes the thumb bit out. Ideally, you want to get that bolt out from behind the shock tower. Uh, I might be able to squeeze my hand past, but we'll see how we go. Uh, no, nah, look. Right underneath it. Use another bolt to push that other bolt through. It's uh, I can't really grab hold of it. I've got like two fingers on the end of it. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Yeah. Right, so all those bolts removed. It's just a case of sliding that out. And she's out. Oh, so with that control arm out, you can see just how absolutely stuffed that that bush is actually on both sides. So, yeah, we'll uh, throw some new ones in. Uh, so, I'm just going to whack these new ones in. Now, I did have a spare set of old ones because these have been replaced already once since I've owned this car. I was going to rebush them, but my press is just a bit small to allow these to sit in right and, and get these bushes pressed in and out easily. So uh, the other option is buying tooling to both do it. And it kind of, I guess it's, it adds a lot of expense uh, that you're probably not going to use that often. So this is kind of the more cost effective method uh, for changing out. Now, before I put this in, I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to say, well, what about alignment? Now, in theory, you shouldn't need to realign those because all your mounting points are all non-adjustable. There's no adjustment that you can have uh, within these top uh, top bushes. I would say the only uh, caveat to that would be that if you've had an alignment while those, suspect, while those bushes are, are severely worn, then yeah, you know, your alignment may not be accurate, so it probably hurt, wouldn't hurt to uh, to get another alignment done. But generally, for the most part, you shouldn't need to worry about that. So throwing these in is just generally just a reversal of pulling them out. Now, sometimes these fell out really easy just due to those worn inner sleeves in the in the bushes so getting the new ones in is going to be a little bit more tricky but to get it right they just slide right in so no glove this time behind the uh behind the splash guard or mud guard whatever you want to call it, guard liner just so i can feel what's going on a little bit easier Now it's one of those jobs just working really completely blind. So it's not the most easy thing around. There we go. The next bit is one of those really fun jobs that uh, I really don't like much. So we've got to get all these components back on and then tighten these up as well. But we need to tighten these, these two in particular while suspension is at its normal ride height. So we're just going to... Give these a little nip. So as long as you're still able to move the suspension arm up and down easy without locking it up 
that inside of the, that inner part of the bush normally pretty good uh, not too bad it's just borderline where it needs to be it's just allowing that inner metal sleeve to rotate but uh, not enough that doesn't pinch it enough that it's going to bind up the bush when we adjust the put it in its right height and tighten it up so if you don't do that particular step then these bushes are just not going to last as long as what they should Alright, now I'll leave this uh, height sensor to last. Alright, now with the sway bar and the knuckle, I normally do these both at the same time. So, line up the sway bar and get the knuckle, the ball joint in place. Now, being new, these are pretty stiff, so you may just have to manually alter them. Torque those up in a sec, but for now we'll just nip them up. In order to squeeze this up, I find it's easy just to throw a little jack just under that lower control arm. We just raise that suspension up until you've got enough to get a nut on. And I'll throw the new one on. Now hopefully, we'll pull up the taper without spinning. So far, so good. In regards to torque, so for reference, your upper ball joint knuckle, uh, 70 newton meters. Your sway bar is 115. And uh, these upper two, uh, I've got 175 newton meters. So for the two bushes on the suspension arm, what we're going to do is we're going to jack up that lower arm and we'll measure from the center of the hub to the top of the fender, uh, 466 mil is our normal ride height distance. So we'll jack up to that distance and then we can tighten up those inboard ones. Uh, I'll do these two first and then we'll jack it up. 70 on the knuckle, which really isn't much, but because it's a taper, that's all it needs. And this is one where we need to so we're at 600, 595 at the moment. So we go jack up to 466. Okay. We are now sorry, the hub uh, just under 466. So pretty close. Now in order to get that to the right height I've had to when I've jacked originally jacked this up I had the vehicle in off-road height uh, so with that pressure in these airbags there's no way I can just jack this up willingly uh, without it coming off my car stands over here and it just all gets a bit dodgy so uh, while it's been jacked up I've put it into normal height mode and I've been able to basically just dumping a bit of pressure out of this airbag uh, you could undo the airline at the top to do the same thing, uh, but yeah, you know, either way, whichever works for you. Now, for these, I'll just give these a decent nip up now, and that way I don't have to get too stressed about uh, what height the uh, where that suspension sits in its travel when I tighten the rest of the way up. Well, you need a, a reasonable socket, a uh, depth socket to get onto the air to tighten up, to torque up correctly. But to be honest, I think it's one of those things that's probably near on impossible. So, that's just a matter of tightening the hell out of it and uh, hope for the best, really. So you can see the problem here with the, with the deep socket. You've got this nut for the heat shields that's kind of in the way and fouls. So really, only your best bet is just with some ring spanners. And unfortunately, you don't really have much in the way of movement to get it on.
there is no real easy way to get torque wrench in for these uh, two bolts so I've pretty much done them FT uh, if you reckon you know what that is then uh, write it down in the comments and we'll see who's right the last little job is just getting the height sensor on so I'll just point that on okay so now that this side is pretty much done all you need to do is do the other side pretty much just a mirror image uh, same process applies, there's nothing really any different. Access may be a little bit different on the other side, I can't remember. I'm going to move on and do that job next, so that'll be off camera. Not really much point filming both sides. Also, something worth mentioning, just in regard to where the suspension height uh, sensor attaches on now, this section here could actually be a, a different length on the new one compared to this old one, so there is a possibility we're going to have to redo the, uh, the height calibration. Now, I'm going to do that in a, in a separate video. Uh, that'll be coming up soon uh, because I've got a rear height sensor I need to change out, which I'm going to be doing after this. If you don't want to miss that, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. That way you won't miss it when it's uploaded. Thank you very much for watching so far. If you like this video, uh, don't forget to throw a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you liked or didn't like. Uh, either way, all comments are good comments. It all helps the YouTube algorithm. But uh, thanks very much for sticking with me, and uh, I'll see you in a future video. Cheers, guys.